Amen. I'm going to try to get through this message like this. <laughs> Amen. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash. Look at somebody and say generational curses. Generational curses. This, this picture right here touched my heart when I saw it. And that's why I put it up. Matter of fact, let me go back. And you can see what it represents. Just somebody that is just a victim of somebody. So you got the matriarch at the top crying. And all these folks under him. And then you got somebody that just a victim. Of some bad choices. And I, you know... Thank God for the big mamas and the matriarchs and those. But where are the fathers? Why is there always a big mama, but big daddy is a pimp? Big mama is the nourisher that will come and rock you to sleep in her bosom. But big daddy is a pimp. That's a phrase we use for a pimp. And that's in our community. African Americans. Amen? Ain't no white big daddies. I don't think there's a white big mama. She, you know, white woman ain't gonna accept that title. Uh uh. Ain't no big mama. You should be insulted. <laughs> Amen? But yeah, so it's just sad that all of these things are being passed down. And that's the beauty of this church. That's the thing I wanted more than anything. When God you know, when I was traveling, doing the truth behind hip hop and all that, people would always say, what's the solution? What's the solution? You talking about the problem, what's the solution? Even though I would do an altar call, cast out demons, and, and folks would repent and all that, they don't think that's the solution. They think the solution is, uh, what do we listen to? Give us something else to listen to. No, the solution is just get your heart right. You'll find what you can listen to. <laughs> Amen. That's the solution. But anyway, folk crazy. We know that. So when the church was, when, when the Lord was leading me to start a church, that's what I wanted. I wanted the church to be a place where we could come. Troubled people could come and fix certain things to make the next generation better. Amen. Amen. The Truth Behind Hip Hop is a generational message. We have proof of that because this generation is now subject to it because of the previous generation. Right? We saw that when, when, when we shot the Rewind not too long ago. When we did the altar call at the Rewind, parents came up with their children. Parents that had heard the message prior and brought their children up for the same deliverance. That's generational. And not only is that generational, that's preventive. Amen. 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 You know, I heard this preacher earlier this morning talking about trying to just, oh, I just wish there was more than two choices of male and female. I wish there was more than one, but God just didn't, he just didn't do it that way. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. The two choices solve everything. When there are more than two, you have issues. We as preachers and pastors, we're supposed to be solution-oriented. I'm not supposed to be just up talking without a solution. Amen. Right? And so I wanted this church when we started in our house with just 20 people. Well, we didn't start with 20, but it ended up 20 in our house. I would always talk about our history and where we came from and how we can fight to change the future. If we get the right information, now there are some things about you you'll never change. Some things about your history can't be changed. It is. Look at somebody say it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody did the best they could. Big mama, big daddy, little mama, little whoever. Oh, your mama named little mama. Oh, Lord. Help you. We know it. Look, boy, them titles all mean something. You get a picture in your mind, too. Little mama. Oh, Lord. Yeah. 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 All of that stuff. But you, you know, however you got it, whatever happened to you, some of that stuff you can never change. But we want to help you stop feeling bad about what happened to you because you got something better happening for you. Because you made a better choice this time than somebody else. Somebody else made a choice based on what they knew. You're making a choice with more information. 
so you can make an informed decision and help the next generation. Amen? So that's why we're here. Look at somebody say, that's why we're here. And so generational curses should not be exuding from you at this point. You should be reversing these things. Changing this tree. I need this tree to turn green. I need some leaves to come on it. Amen. It can't be fall all the time. Where is spring? I want to be that tree planted by the rivers of living water. Amen. That has a full supply. These things come when we break generational curses. Now, let me start off by saying there is no real biblical. This word isn't it didn't phrase this way in the Bible. So there are those that say, well, you know, there's really no such thing as a Jesus as a generational curse because Jesus took off, took the curse, became the curse to destroy the curse. He did that. But if you don't believe it, you cursed. Is hell a curse? I think hell is the epitome of a curse. That's the worst place you can be. And so if you don't choose Christ, you're subject to a curse. And if you've chosen Christ, but you still allow the curse to operate, it'll keep operating. Somebody, look at somebody and say, somebody got to break the curse. Somebody has to break the curse. You look over your history, you look over your past, you look over your family, get that old brochure, that program from the family reunion and just start going down the line. Somebody got to do something different here. On this side of family, nothing but wedlock births. On this side of family, nothing but divorces. On this side of family, nothing but a bunch of gossip and slander. On this side of the family, murder and killing, crimes and stealing and robbing. Somebody got to do something different. Everybody can't go to jail. Everybody don't need to be in court. Everybody on this side, everybody's broken on the county. It's not a coincidence. It was strategically set up by the enemy to destroy your tree. Oh, this church. I, I just get so uncomfortable here, Pastor. Seems like everything you say be hitting me. Let it hit you. Amen. You know what's going to happen if you leave here? You still going to get hit. Amen. You might as well get hit in here where the truth is. Amen. Get hit in here where somebody can back you up. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 AdamandBeliever.com forward slash generational curses. Dot PDF. And I, you know, I speak to curses. I call them by name. Amen. Amen. I call them by name. My son may think I'm crazy. Jonathan may think I'm crazy sometimes. I just be talking in my, to myself while I'm with him saying stuff. Because if I think of it then, I'm breaking it. I'm going to say something. I'm going to address it. I'm going to address it. I don't want my life out of my control. I don't want a bunch of stuff happening that I just can't do nothing about. I'm going to act while I have the chance to act. Yes, sir. Amen. And yeah, we did dumb stuff, stuff we didn't know, stuff we did know, whatever the case. But now it's time to play clean up because yes, Jesus is coming back. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I better clean up what I messed up. Started my life over again. I better clean up. <laughs> <laughs> clean it up man and look we, we're trying to fix these things so that our children can have an easier path let's make things better for them amen, amen. amen. and you know parents you know just like this grandbaby I'm proud of this grandbaby because he was born into a good situation What's wrong with that? I can be happy about that because I made a couple of decisions that were the right ones. Bishop made a few decisions that were the right ones. And we ended up in this situation because of good decisions. You get mad if you want to. I don't care. And 
that's what I want to see. I want the same thing for Lennon. I want the same thing for Jonathan. I want the same thing for your children. Yeah. What do you think we in here for, man? Yeah. Hey, man, we in here to stop failure. Yeah. We in here, amen. 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 We in here to get every teen in here off Fool's Hill. Amen. No, you ain't, no, no, we don't want you going down that street. Moving that sign. You know, there's a sign trying to block you from going down that street. You didn't pick the sign up and moved it. <laughs> Fool's Hill, what's that? Move it to the side. You, no, we want to keep you off Fool's Hill. Amen. We want your way to be easy. Amen. Many of us was on Fool's Hill. Thank God we didn't die on it. Amen. But we was on it. Amen. We had a tent. Amen. We set up camp on it. Amen. But don't you look at me funny, save folks in here. Amen. Some of y'all had a tent when you were saved and still on Fool's Hill, saved. Amen. Been there, got the t-shirt and the cereal box. Just do stupid stuff sometimes because generational curses come and you don't really know what it is. Somebody in your family did something and that junk revisited you and you didn't tell it no. It's all right. Everybody in the two saved for this message, Walter. Today, this is the, this is the sanctimonious, religiously sanctified folks. It's to everything. Oh no, Pastor. You know, once you save, brother, generational curse don't care whether you save. Amen. It'll whisper in your ear with that stank breath. Hey, I'm over here. <sighs> <sighs> you know, breath stinking when you're looking like that. Oh yeah, I just smell it. You know. <sighs> There's no way it could smell good. <laughs> Amen. So we here to stop, try to stop this stuff. Amen. Amen. Y'all gonna let me preach today? Amen. We inherit our looks, our attitudes, and our mannerisms from our parents when we are born. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna drink some water on that. Somebody. When you call your child a devil, you the devil's mama and daddy. Did nobody clap? Don't call your don't call them that. You incriminating yourself. Get somewhere and pray for them. Don't you call your child like that? You're just a devil. Ain't no good in you. Well, I got your DNA, jive, parent. Ain't no nothing good in me. Must not have been much good in you. Now don't say that to your parents. That's a hyperbole. A <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you inherited your looks. Amen. Your looks. I can see it. When I see some of y'all's parents, especially TJ. That, now TJ... And his daddy, that, that's something, that's different. The TJ had a suit on and he was back there and I, and I told PJ, I think it was, I said, oh man, TJ's dad is here. And I was gonna go back there and I said, that's not his daddy. He looked just like him. Yeah, he got his looks from his dad. Got his mannerisms and his attitudes from his dad. Amen. Every mistake his dad made is gonna visit him. Just cause he look, oh, I, oh, I thought I had the other one. <laughs> Just cause you look like it. Yeah. And if you don't look like your daddy, his transgressions are still going to visit you. Yeah. What your mama did is going to visit you. Come in your house and try to jump in you. Our attitudes and general outlooks on life come from the disciplining of our guardians. So whoever raised you, that's where you got your attitude and outlook on life. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. But if I wasn't raised by nobody, you was raised by somebody. Amen. You can't raise yourself. You ain't the jungle boy. You ain't Magua. What's, his, what's the boy's name? Mowgli. You know, Mowgli talking to snakes and tigers and dance and bears. <laughs> The bird says, <laughs> they picked the biggest animal to do the dance, didn't it? 
You know he was black. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> hey man, you ain't ra- you ain't raise yourself. You didn't raise yourself. Hey man, quit saying that. No, we just pretty much left to myself. No, you weren't. Amen. Somebody was there. Amen. Somebody was there. Yes, sir. Amen. And you know, humans are the only thing born that can't care for themselves. All other animals will just figure it out. We got to have help. Amen. 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 But our attitudes and our outlook on life comes from the disciplining of our guardians. Proverbs 29 and 7. And that's why you want a good situation. Amen. That's why we don't do teen dating. Because you setting stuff up for failure. God forbid your kid come home talking about they got a boyfriend and girlfriend and you don't know them. You don't know their family. You don't know where they came from, what they into. You starting a tree. Did you know you starting a tree? You need to make sure the tree start off right. But our attitudes and general outlook in life, it comes from our guardians. Proverbs 29 and 17, correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. What? Look at somebody say correct. Correct Correct thy son, and you'll get some rest. You will get some good rest and sleep if you correct him. Amen. Yea, he shall give delight unto your soul if you correct him. Yeah, correct your son. Amen. What the parents do in moderation, the children will do excessively. Amen. You was just listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire and trying to tell him, see, this real music. Now he listening to Lil Uzi Vert. (laughs) Now, Daddy, this is real music. (laughs) Got the devil in him. Amen. Yeah, but what you do in moderation, see, we just take a little sip of this 40 on special occasions. You can't have none. No, put that down. He watching you. Yeah, then somebody get a cold. Why the rubber tussin? Go in the room, Junior, just. Well, the what? The what? <laughs> In other words, the things we do as parents will usually show up even more prevalently in our children. Amen. 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 Colossians 3 and 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. Don't provoke, don't be the cause of their anger. Or they'll be discouraged. I thought you was talking about generational curse. I am! Heredity is important because our bloodline affects our behavior. And our behaviors train up our children. Did you hear that? Your behavior trains up your children. Yeah. Our habits... Thought processes and patterns are passed down to our children as they develop around us. Amen. 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 Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Is that not the word? Amen. Amen. Y'all still believe that? You know, some folks don't believe that. I've had pastors argue me down. Well, it say when they old, like at the end of their life, old. That's not what that says. They've argued me down. No, nope, I'm going with what it says. Train up a child in the way he should go. Amen. Abraham was blessed by God and his dependents were blessed as well. Amen. Yeah, that's Abraham. <laughs> Somebody like, 
I can't tell whether he white or black. Good. You know Isaac is black. He got a full on throat. Full throat. Hey man, it's picked out nice too. Ain't it a letter? Did it, did it do a pretty good job? Did it do? Did a pretty good job. Abraham getting him ready, bro. Turn around, turn around. Get in the back. Where we going, Daddy? Don't worry about it. Just picking it out. Abraham was blessed by God, and his dependents were blessed as well. This is a generational blessing. So when God speaks, uh, spoke a blessing on Abraham, that's why we say he's the God of Abraham. But we don't just say Abraham. We say what? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because God spoke it on Abraham, but Jacob had the 12 tribes. Yeah, and in the womb, Jacob and Esau, they wrestling over the blessing. That's how important it was. Somebody had to win the battle before birth. Because God, when he speaks it, it's a generational blessing. Amen. And I don't want to just be blessed by myself. I want my children blessed because I'm blessed. Amen. I want my children's children blessed because I'm blessed. Because the only alternative is a curse. Genesis 22 and 18. And in thy seed shall how many nations? All nations of the earth be blessed. How many nations? How much is all? He said in thy seed. That's why the Hebrew Israelites is just crazy. He said, in thy seed, how many nations? Oh. Of the what? Earth. Earth. All nations. Are Gentiles, did Gentiles have nations? Yes. Sir. yes. Were they blessed because of Abraham? Yes. yes. In thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast what? Now what if he disobeyed? then all the nations would have been cursed that came from his seed. God told them, the children of Israel, that even though they were blessed because of Abraham, they could be cursed because of their disobedience to his commandments. Deuteronomy 11 and 26, he said, Behold, I set before you this day a what? A blessing and a curse. Somebody said, well, I thought he blessed all of them. They were blessed. He said, I'm setting before you the opportunity to stay blessed or be cursed. This is a generational curse because not only were they punished for their sins, but their children suffered also. So if you disobedient, you bring the generational curse. And it's a generational curse because not only are you in trouble, but your children are in trouble. The sins of the father always cause the children to suffer. Exodus 34 and 7. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children until the third and to the fourth generation. Amen. So that generational curse will keep going until somebody stops it. Amen. Look at somebody saying, I'm here to stop it. Today, generational curses come from evil spirits. That control our emotions. Oh, y'all, please hear this. Generational curses come from evil spirits that control our emotions and cause our behaviors to change our children. Yeah, you walking around the house cussing all the time and 
upset and mad all the time, you're changing your children. You walking around the house doubting all the time, messing, you walking around the house messing up the viewpoint of authority to your children. Every, under, every authority you under, you questioning and talking against, you changing your children. Your children thinking, I thought you chose to be that. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 just, you are causing a generational curse. You can't get along with nobody. You come home and talk about everybody. To try to cover up the mistakes you made. You want to make everyone else's mistakes be uh, front and center? Your children watching you. They're going to grow up with a complex. Thinking something is wrong with everybody so I shouldn't trust anyone. And they're going to mess up every opportunity they've ever had to succeed. Because they watching you. Man, I'm preaching. If that ain't a generational curse, I don't know what is. Watching you and your husband fussing all the time, cussing each other out and fighting, grow up, they don't want they don't want no parts of marriage. You just formed a generational curse. You gave birth to it because of your behavior, your emotions. That pastor, he trash, he this, he that. I thought we were supposed to love everybody. No, not him. Okay. So good luck with them staying in the church. In any church. You started a generational curse by your actions. Yeah. Man, I know I'm preaching it here. Yeah. I know I... Woo it becomes a bloodline thing because we are raised up under the bad choices and decisions of those before us and in many ways we are reaping what they sowed so we're reaping what their issues sowed so the things they did we pay for them as their children Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, what's going to happen? Amen. Can't nobody get along with you. You all mean and evil and you all slick and slimy. You're going to pay for that. Amen. And you know who's going to make you pay? Your children. That's why we don't get practice getting back at folks. Amen. Malicious acts. Don't do no malicious acts because it's going to come back. You know that from the gangster movie. Yes, sir. <laughs> they always come back and get the son of the one that did the... Yeah. Woo! I know I break up. When a parent yields to sin and those sins change their behaviors, it affects the children and they are changed by it as well. Yeah. When you yield to sin and that sin changes your behavior, you start making the sin that you yielded to. Now, we all have yielded to sin, but we repent for it. For it. We don't change the Bible to accommodate it. We don't change our belief to accommodate it. We confess it and repent and change. We don't keep... But when it changes your behavior and you start saying, well, this right here, you know, my little taste right here, this okay. Then your children see that little moderation, but they're going to do it in excess. Mark 3 and 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods unless he first does what? So you got to get the parents to do it first to open the door for the children. Somebody's scared of this message, but that's okay. It's an accountability message. We have to take responsibility. Amen. But we come to church for accountability. We don't want to be swimming around in our own head all the time. That's a dangerous place. In your head, eventually, your, your blood cells are going to start making you in the right. You're going to start thinking you okay. 
You need somebody to tell you, nah, bro, you ain't okay. That's all right. That's all right. Not at all. Amen. Can I keep preaching? Hey, man. Examples of parental behaviors that create generational curses. Here they are. And, you know, every one of us got at least one on this list. Hey, man, don't be in here. Woo, woo. All got one. But, yeah, yeah, these are the sins that cause generational curses. Number one, divorce. Divorce causes generational curses. Yeah, because somebody's, the, the children aren't going to, understand why it couldn't be worked out. It's just not. And no matter what you do, you can't make it right in their eyes. Yeah. Now understand, I'm reading these things, but God forgives all these things, Amen. but I got to read them. Amen. Amen. So don't be feeling away. Wait. Amen. And don't be feeling good because yours is coming. <laughs> Neglect. When your career is more important than your children and your family and your husband that's neglect when your career is more important than your wife and your children amen. neglect amen. amen when you have a child out of wedlock and you don't care for them uh, amen. amen that's neglect amen. that causes a generational curse because that child gonna feel some kind of way and react to a girl she's gonna want to be loved she don't care if he is a mass murderer can I get a hug? Put the axe down and hug me. Amen. Put the AK down and love me. Yeah. Yeah, if it's a guy, Lord, I don't know. Amen. Prostitute, everything, anything, especially porn and all of that come from neglect. Amen. Amen. Can I keep going? Is this too, too, too hardcore for, for the audience? Okay. Abandonment. We don't abandon people. I'm talking about your children. You don't abandon your children. Amen. You can't. You can't hide children. Amen. Amen. You don't abandon your children. Because that will cause some serious curses fatherlessness amen. amen we already know I got a video after video on this one but yeah this causes generational curses yeah this is one of the things that Jesus said religion was he said good religion is caring for the fatherless yeah. why did he say that because good religion can help you when there is no father present. Amen. 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 So we got single mothers in here. Man, you better stay in church. Amen. And you better keep your boys around boys in church. Amen. Where good religion is, that's good religion at ABC. Amen. 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 Man, can I keep preaching? Inferiority complexes, y'all. This causes most generational curses in the black community. An inferiority complex. That's somebody that blew it in life, but they don't want to admit it. So they tell their kids something is wrong with everybody else. Amen. To feel better about themselves, they tell their kids something is wrong with everybody else. They just talk about everybody. Anytime their kid got good news or does something good, they, they tear it down because something got to be wrong with that person. Something's wrong. It just, it, they just gossip and talk all that foolishness about people. Because mama sat them down after church every Sunday and went down a list on what's wrong with the church folks. Gave her children an inferiority complex. They can't come into the presence of anyone that's any good. It's going to make them feel inferior. I tell the truth in here. Yes, Amen. Amen. Some of y'all went through that. Amen. I used to go over some folks' house, me and my wife. We'd just be thinking when we leave, why are they at this church? You know the pastor, you know. We know some stuff about him and you know the deacon this one and 
this one and this one and this one. You're just running it down to us on a Sunday. Remember that, baby? We go, we, we're here to eat. Where the chicken? Will you put that chicken out here and shut up? And this and then this one. And man, we bought the stuff I know. Why are you doing that? It wasn't until I got older I realized, oh, that's an inferiority complex. Something wrong with you. You did something, and now you're trying to convince everybody that something is wrong with everything. To feel better. Yeah. And be members of the church. Be in church. Can't stop praising in them. I just can't stop praising in them. If you was the hardest singer, then got home. Man, I'm telling you, we couldn't, we didn't understand. We didn't, we just didn't understand. We were young and we just didn't know. How do you, why are you here? I didn't know till I started pastoring and start meeting them at this church. And I be thinking, oh my, why are you here? I know you talking about me. Why are you here? But that's an inferiority complex. People that are secure in who they are and what God has called them to do, they don't do that. They don't have to. Don't make nobody look bad so they can look good. Depression. You know if you're carrying a baby and you're depressed, your baby's going to come out probably with eczema. or some kind of issue, they're going to feel rejected because of your depression. That's a generational curse. And then they'll struggle with depression for the rest of their lives. Am I telling the truth, doctor? She's looking at me like, yeah. Yeah. The baby is forming and developing in you. So if all your cells spell depressed, Yeah. There ain't no Christian supposed to be walking around depressed. How are you depressed? And Jesus rose. Jesus rose from the dead. What you depressed about? He rose so you can be delivered from depression. Take that depression to the cross and leave it there. That's what he rose for. This tight, I know. This might be somebody's last Sunday. Good. Amen. We don't have room. We don't have room. Criminal behavior. Generational curse. Junior shot somebody. Junior the second shot somebody. Junior the third got a gun. He had to stop buying one. <laughs> what is going on in this family? Criminal behavior. His daddy was a thief. He a thief. Yeah, mama a thief. Big Sally Walker, she ran the streets. <laughs> ran the streets with an old kitchen knife. Don't you mess with her. <laughs> Amen. Passing it down. Amen. Passing it down to the next generation. Amen. Baby, put you in a choke hold. Try to hold a baby. Hey, hey, boy, something wrong with this boy. He holding on a little too tight. I can't breathe. Oh, boss baby. You had a boss baby. Criminal. It's just passing it down. Somebody gotta somebody gotta obey the law. Amen. Amen. Somebody can't be a you gotta stop being a hot check writer. You'll pass that down too. It's the way daddy used to do it. You will. Everybody goes to jail every now and then. Who told you that? <laughs> Sally Walker. <laughs> No, everybody don't go to jail. 
No! Everybody in cuffs. Everybody's been in, everybody's been in handcuffs. I don't think that's correct. <laughs> but that's what you grew up under. That's your neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? You saw that. Somebody got to stand up and say, hey, I'm going to be in the law. I'm going to be a law-abiding citizen. Even if my mama wasn't, even if my daddy's locked up right now, I'm going to obey the law. Amen. Abuse. That'll create a generational curse. Yeah. Your daddy beat your mama. Now you, you hitting the women. You hitting women. Yeah, sexual abuse too. That's worse. You were sexually abused by somebody and now you're sexually abusing people. That's a generational curse. And until somebody stop it, it'll keep going. Substance abuse. Yeah, you can't keep smoking. You know something's wrong with smoking. Amen. I don't know. How do folk leave out of church and go out in the parking lot and have a cigarette? Oh, that was a good message. I wanted to be hanging. Lord, that message was really good. It was really good. The message was really good, man. God really moved in there. He, he really moved. Ash don't never fall. Just, um, was really good, really. Brother, you got two inches of ash and one inch of cigarette. Just heard a sermon. Why are you smoking? Oh, oh, this right here. This, this right here. You know, this, this, this ain't nothing. This ain't. Brother, that's a cigarette. Not just, it's not just bad for you. You covering up something that is very, very wrong. If you need a cigarette, something in your life is misaligned. You're on drugs, man. The Surgeon General know that. Something is wrong if you need a smoke. But I only do it when... Why are you doing it? Something's wrong and you need to investigate. But it's a generational curse. I guarantee you somebody else in your family was slipping and smoking. Mm. This is a generational curse. The Jezebel spirit. Because Jezebel always raises her daughters up to be Jezebels. And raise her sons up to be no accounts. The sons are no accounts. Because she emasculating the, the husband and the boys. But the girls have all kinds of success in this life. Set them up to go look for a guy they can do it to. But the boy constantly fails in life. Amen. Can't get ahead. He's been emasculated. Amen. So, I, I know I'm preaching. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey. Mm-hmm. Ahab's spirit births a curse. How do you think Jezebel is doing that? Because she married to some old don't say nothing deaf mute. You walk up to her, hey brother, how you doing? <laughs> he can't say nothing because his instructions were, get my purse and go to the car. <laughs> he can't talk to you. Hey man, everything okay? <laughs> you know how that look when they looking at you. Y'all, that's Ahab. Bible say he went and started crying. Got solid. <laughs> she was like, what's wrong? Nate, what's his name? Not Neymar. See, I got that movie in my head. What's Naaman? Naaman won't let me have his vineyard. And I really want it. She was like, ain't you a king? I oh, know. But he said, no. 
That's in the Bible. Jezebel said, I'll handle it. You know she was shaking her old ugly head. Mm. I'll handle it. Killed that man and took his vineyard. Then wrote letters in, the, in her husband's name. Now they be getting in the in the, in, in the in their husband's phone. We think we think we talking to the dude in our emails and stuff, elders. We really thought it was a guy talking to us. It was his wife using his name to rebuke the leadership. Don't you know you causing a generational curse? They don't realize it till the kids grow up. Homosexuality, lesbianism, that's a generational curse. Amen. That's a bunch of molesting. A bunch of molesting. Leaving folks with folks. Leaving them, letting them spend the night over places too much. Trusting folks because you busy and got stuff to do. Amen. 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 You done let Aunt Sheila come stay with your daughters. Amen. She got four arms like Popeye. <laughs> Smoking a pipe. You need me to do what? We need you to spend a night and keep our girls because we got someone to go, all right, I'll be over there. <laughs> Why you leaving your doc? You got what? Sometimes you just can't trust folks from the eye test. Now you fail the eye test. You fail the eye test. She driving a six foes with switch. <laughs> Let me stop. It's getting ridiculous. But that's where this come from. Quit trusting everybody with your children, especially when the unction of the Holy Ghost has already spoke to you and told you, no, you don't need to be. And don't start that, well, we got to give everybody a chance. No, you don't. You ain't got to give everybody a chance to mess your kids up. They should get one chance to do that. Cancel your plans if you don't have nowhere or nobody you trust. False God worship. Pledging. Yeah, it's all kind of curses. Death curses. Murdering curses. Folks dying young in families because somebody was a Freemason. Somebody did the pledge to Freemasonry and everybody dies. Because you have to offer up all of your seed for that status. You done pledged the Delta and AKA and all of this junk. And now that, that ain't nothing but emasculation of men. Now you done took all of the masculinity out of the family. She didn't pledge to some witchcraft. Amen. They sung that creepy song at your wedding. Lit that candle. That's a ceremony, a ritual. Gave birth to something in your seed. Devil sitting back waiting for you to have a kid. Because you owe it to him now. I'm preaching to you. Oh. Amen. They're going to talk about me anyway, Elder. I might as well go and preach the truth. That's what I said. Hatred. Hatred causes a crazy generational curse. Because if your parents hate everybody, you're going to struggle with self-hatred. Amen. Yeah, that's where that tat all them tattoos come from. That's self-hatred. Self-mutilation. You enjoy burning your own flesh, cutting your own flesh, self-hatred. Yeah, that's why the scripture said, don't, don't, don't make any cuttings in your flesh 
for the dead or print any marks upon you. Amen. That's what he was talking about. Well, that's the Old Testament. Now that tattoo's real, brother. Amen. That cutting, that's a real thing. Amen. That's self-hatred. Amen. Yeah, the dude in the tattoo parlor hate himself. Ask him. Man, why do you work in a tattoo parlor? It's kind of creepy in here. He hate himself. He want to give you some. Malice create a generational curse. You'll have your children trying to get back at somebody because you always got back at folks. Y'all, them two, what's them two families that feuded? <laughs> the children, the McCoys, and the whatever. The who? Hatfields and McCoys. Only the old folks saying it. Hatfields and McCoys. <laughs> Everybody over 60 know that. The Hatfield and McCoys, just a feuding family. Yeah, real story. They fight, then the children fight, then the children's children fighting the same family. You mad because three generations ago somebody shot your dog? That's malice. But that's what uh, the, the black Hebrew Israelite movement is. It's a malicious movement. Amen. They're trying to pay white people back for something that happened. Before you were born, before your mama and daddy and daddy's daddy was born, Amen. you mad about that for real? Amen. Really? You really mad about that? You ain't mad about not taking care of your children. You ain't mad about not treating your wife right. You ain't mad about none of that, but you that mad. Envy. Jealous. Turn around and talk about people because you're jealous. You don't have nothing, so you want to make something wrong with everybody that's got something. And you sit around and have all your kids around while you talking, running down folks because you envious of them and wish you had it. They grow up doing that. They pattern their whole life after someone else because that's what you taught them. Yeah. They get best friends that they want to be like and try to imitate. You know how dangerous that is? You close to somebody that's trying to be you? Finally, discord gossip. You're just a gossiper. Children gossip. Everybody gossip. Busy body yet. So in discord that's a generational curse. When you sow discord, and you know what that curse does? It causes discord in your own family. Your own children will be ratting you out and talking about you behind your back to folks because they see you doing it. Amen. Amen. Generational curses. Summary! Oh my goodness! Lord, Lord, Lord. Well, everybody need to hear it. Amen. Aren't you glad you're in a church where don't nothing change no matter how many people come? Y'all been in, at them churches where once they reach a hundred, miracle season, harvest, destiny, purpose, and faith. <laughs> Ain't nothing changed in here since I was in my house. Amen. 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 Ain't nothing changed since you heard me on the road when I was doing the truth behind hip hop. Still loud. <laughs> Summary. All of these and many more sins can move through a family and curse its descendants. They are cursed because those that raised them neglected to bless them and break all of the curses that could come through these behaviors. We are responsible for our own actions, but we may not be guilty of what happened to us. Many times, we experience so much suffering in our upbringing 
that it's hard for us to move past certain behaviors and habits. When it comes to generational curses, it's harder to break free because these things were ingrained in our development. But the power of the Holy Ghost can change us and set us free from any behavior. Now, this is the beauty of being a seasoned preacher. I'm seasoned. Amen. I don't care what you say. I've been doing this for a minute. 30 years, I'm seasoned. So here's the beauty. I'm going to bring some balance. We must pray for our parents, grandparents, and guardians that subjected us to certain things that we should have never experienced. However, we cannot fault them because most of them were subjected to an even worse upbringing and decisions in their development. Now, I'm just going to speak for African Americans because they were the most recent enslaved, even though all people have been enslaved in some point. We do know that, right? But African Americans are the most recent. So, can you imagine slaves being set free, having children, and then told to raise them? What they going to do? They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. Most of their kids were taken from them. Most of them were abused, beaten. So it's going to be hard for them to even understand a child that has any kind of problem. Can you imagine trying to tell a former slave about your problem? (laughs) I'm not feeling good today, mama. What? (laughs) I carried you on my back. While I was busting up the shepherd rope. You can't tell me what? That's true. See, you don't ever think about that stuff. So that communication was an issue. Then that kept going. And then we don't even want to talk about Jim Crow and all of the, uh, not Jim Crow, what's the dude, uh, the Willie, Willie Lynch and all of that. The reprogramming of the man and the woman and all of that kind of stuff. I know I got work to do in the black community. You know, it's just hard to teach the things I have to teach, especially when I'm dealing with Ahab and Jezebel, because the programming of African Americans because of slavery is just hard. You just keep hitting walls because, man, it's hard. You know, and then people will accept it or whatever, but then, man, they're not pushing marriage. They're only pushing careers. They want to start their kids off. Man, you got to be something more than that. More than what? More than what you are to me? And man, it just confuses children. Amen. It's just hard. It's hard. Amen. It's hard. And then when you're trying to help them, they think you're trying to hurt them and then they attack you. And black folk just don't attack. They attack with a community. They got to go get help to attack you. But We got to pray for our parents, grandparents, and guardians because they put us through some stuff, but they only did it because their upbringing was even worse. But look at somebody and say, we all need Jesus. They need him. We need him. Slaves need him. White folks need him. We all need Jesus. So to truly break a curse, we must first forgive the source of it and clear our heart of any anger, hatred, or malice. Yeah, so whoever raised you wrong, forgive them. And thank God that you got raised. The only way you know it was wrong is because now you've learned right. You wouldn't know right if they hadn't raised you. Man, ain't nobody perfect. We make mistakes, man. We do dumb stuff. People, man, we just trying. Y'all experiments. Nobody nobody came with a book. When when my grandson was born, did no book pop out in the manual? So we all need Jesus. So to truly break a curse, we must first forgive the source. Then we can speak against the curse in Jesus' name. Can't speak against the curse if you're still carrying hatred or malice toward where the curse came from. You see what I'm saying? You got to clear your heart with forgiveness. Amen? His blood, Jesus' blood, washes us clean and makes us righteous. We must renounce all behaviors that were caused by the curse and change the way we behave, think, and speak. 
So once the curse is gone, you got to start changing stuff. You got to change the way you think, speak, and behave. Resist the devil and he will flee. That's changing your behavior. Resist him. He trying to make you say that? Nope, I can't have no emotional outburst anymore. Because then I say things I don't mean. People hear it and they take me for what I said. So I just formed a curse. So I got to stop. Hold my tongue. I can't say that. I can't do that. I can't get nobody back. Because when I get them back, the devil going to get my kids back. Uh, amen. Resist the devil, he'll flee. This resistance will come easier and easier as we mature away from the curse. God will see us through it, but we must keep the faith and fight it off. Amen? Amen. Jose 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Everybody stops there. They love to quote this, but they stop right there. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Then it says, because you rejected what Pastor G. Craig Lewis just preached to you. Uh -huh. yeah. yes, but God told me something. You don't belong in here if God tell you everything. Amen. Amen. If God tell you everything, you don't belong in here. This church is for the people that believe God's going to tell them something through the pastor. Amen. That's what this church is for. That's why we, yeah, yeah. that's what we do. You know. Yeah. But if God tell you everything, you don't need, you don't need a church. Amen. You don't need a preacher. No. You're good. He said, but because you have rejected knowledge. Yeah. Man, I just gave y'all some knowledge. Amen. Because you rejected it, I will also reject you. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also what? Forget thy children. Everyone stand to your feet. Man, this was a good message right here. Yes, sir. Generational curses. Hmm. Well, it starts with you. Well, let me say it like this. It stops with you. The generation, generational curse stops with you. You can stop it. Anybody want to stop the curse from their family, from their life, anything? Just come on up here. And we're going to believe what we heard, what we saw. Man, ain't going to be no more murderers in our family. No more thieves in our family. No more broken marriages in our family. No more abandoned children in our family. No more abortions in our family. Yeah. No more fights. Hatred. No more gossips and slanderers. No more envy. Jealousy. No more. No more Jezebels. No more Jezebels. No more inferiority complexes. Well, we just feel inadequate and less than. We breaking curses today. Breaking curses today. No more. No more. Come on up. Amen. I understand, PJ. Come on up. You ain't got to play. Amen. Anyone else? Well, it's going to believe it. It's, it's, it's just got to stop with me. I can't, I can't think for no one else. I can't make decisions for anyone else. I, I, all I got is me. And it's got to stop with me. And you have to say that to yourself. No more early deaths. Premature deaths. Miscarriages. Miscarriages. Infertility. It's breaking it. No more sluts and freaks. Amen. Pimps and... Amen. Breaking it. No, no, it stops with me. Breaking the generational curse today. It stops with me. When I go back to my seat, it stays here. I'm not even taking it back to my seat. You declare that right now. Come on, bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for the power 
of the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you've given us power. We thank you that your son took the curse on the cross. And if we believe on it and receive it, claim it and speak it, Father God, it will work against any curse that is trying to operate in our lives. So we break all curses right now in our families. We break it from over our families, over our children's families. Father God, we break every single curse. No curse will operate in our families from this point on, from our children, from our husbands, from our wives. God, we speak it from our mouths right now, from our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, our aunts, our uncles, our grandparents. God, we break every curse in the name of Jesus, every generational curse. Father God, no matter how long it's been passed down to the first, second, third, fourth generation, however long it's been moving, it stops right here. In the name of Jesus, we speak against it right now. It will not occur. Now, you got to call the curse out. I don't know what it is, so you got to call it out. But we speak against it right now. Divorce. We speak against uh, adultery. We speak against uh, uh, just uh, abandonment, neglect. We speak against abortion. Father God, we speak against all of the inferiority. We speak against these murderous thoughts. Anything. Criminal behavior. We cancel it right now in the name. Homosexuality. Lesbianism. We speak against it right now. It won't carry our last name. In the name of Jesus, it won't carry witchcraft. We speak against it right now. It won't carry our last name. In the name of Jesus, wedlock births. We speak against it right now. Won't carry our name. Won't carry our name. Won't carry our name. In the name of Jesus, we speak it right now over our children. Whether they're here, whether they're not here. We speak it over our children right now. In the name of Jesus, they'll be free from even some of the things we struggled with. Some of the things we messed up with. Some of the things we failed with. They'll have a better way. Because the curse is broken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we speak it. We believe it. And we receive the victory from God over it. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 We denounce the kingdom of darkness right now. And we break every curse with the authority in Jesus' name. Tell the devil, not my family. Not my family. No, no, not my family. In Jesus' name. Now hug somebody. Tell them God has set me free from every curse. Speak it to them and say, you are free from every curse. All generational curses are broken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word. Thank God for his word. You know, sometimes when I'm preaching, I can feel stuff. I can feel it, Elder. I can feel it. First, I start feeling evil. Folks just hate it. Hate me, hate it. But then I start feeling victory as if we've just overcome something. We've just stopped somebody from failing. We just stopped somebody from falling. We just saved somebody from hell. We just saved a child from being wayward, a relationship from breaking up. So we're going to walk into victory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.